In this video, we're going to be graphing quadratic functions. Now, quadratic functions, you can see if it's a quadratic, if it has an x squared on it or a variable squared. Okay, now the shape of quadratics make a, a U, or in this case here, if we look at our basketball star here, he's shooting a basketball and the flight of the ball makes an upside down U. Okay, so that's the shape of your quadratic functions. Now, looking at our basketball star here, we can put a grid on, on the flight of the basketball. So if you notice that the basketball, it's going up here and then it turns from going up to going back down. So that part of the parabola is called a vertex or a turning point. Okay, another feature of this graph here where that basketball star was standing is our y axis. So we do have a y intercept right there. Now, of course, on the actual picture, there wasn't a y intercept, but if we trace the path of the ball, there would have been. Okay, uh, the other thing that we also have here is a reflected y intercept. So, like this ball here, it goes up and back down. Well, it's path is reflected here on its way down. Same thing with the hoop there and there. There's this reflection or mirror image piece to the parabolas. Okay. So same thing with the Y intercept. We have a Y intercept here and then it's reflected over here. If you notice the Y intercept, it is one, two, three, four spots away from the, the line of symmetry or the axis of symmetry, this yellow line here, yellow dashed line. And so one, two, three, four on the other side is that reflected one, just like we had a reflected ball over on this side here, because it goes up and then comes back down. Okay. Now, Here's kind of the, the main strategy that we're going to use for graphing quadratics. Now, quadratic functions, f of x equals ax squared plus bx plus c. That's kind of the general form for quadratics. So from our quadratic function, we are going to identify or calculate the vertex and the y-intercept. Now, those are going to go on the graph, okay? So here we go. Vertex or turning point goes on the graph, and then we'll put the y-intercept also on our graph. Now, if we're handwriting, we're also going to do that reflected y-intercept, okay? So this y-intercept is two away. It's on eight for the y, right, is, is the y-intercept. And this y-intercept, it's two away from the line of axis. And so your reflected y-intercept is also gonna be two away, but on the other side, okay? And then we can draw our, our U-shape, our parabola, on that there. Now, if you are using a computer, a lot of times what they'll do is they'll have you click on the vertex first and then they'll have you click on any other point. We're doing the Y intercept for this one and it will automatically reflect over to the other side. So if you're doing it on a computer, normally you just need the two points, the vertex and then one other point. But if you're hand drawing these, you'll need the vertex, the Y intercept or another point and then reflect it over to the other side of the line of symmetry or the axis of symmetry. Now, there's a bunch to know about quadratics. So here's kind of an overview of the important pieces, right? So f of x equals ax squared plus bx plus c. That's your general form for a quadratic, right? That the value for a here in front, the coefficient of the x squared, that's going to be how steep it is, okay? It's also called vertical stretch. So we had a similar idea with slope, mx plus b, that the m was the slope. So, and, and then slope measures the steepness of a line. Well, here we don't have a line, it's a curve. So it doesn't have a constant rate. So, so it does change, but, but this a, this leading coefficient, does give us an idea of how steep our parabola is going to be. The y-intercept, that's going to be the value here, the value of c, right? A, B, C. C is your constant term there. That's going to be the value for your y-intercept. Now for the vertex, here's your formula for vertex. It's going to be negative b over 2a. So negative whatever this value is over two times this value here. So, and let's say that's a two, okay? So if it's a two, then basically what this is saying is it's just saying whatever value you got here, evaluate the function for that value. So if it's a two, then you put two in for X to find the Y value of your vertex. Cause that's, again, it's an ordered pair or a coordinate point. And then for calculating X intercepts, there's two main ways of doing it. You're either going to factor or you're going to use the quadratic formula here. And this is just an overview of kind of the important pieces for quadratics. And then in this video, we're really going to be focused in on that y-intercept and that vertex. That's going to be our main strategy. We will talk a little bit about this a value here, the, the coefficient of the x squared or the leading coefficient.
And then we do just want to talk about real quickly general form for a quadratic. Again, this is like a broad overview type concept. General form, that's f of x equals ax squared plus bx plus c. There's also a vertex form for quadratics. And that's, it's the same a here. And then you got x minus h squared plus k. Now, hk is going to actually be the value of the vertex, but we're working with general form for this video. So now let's get into some graphing here. Here we have f of x equals x squared minus 4x plus 2. Now this does take that general form for a quadratic, right? So what value replace this a here? Well, how many x squareds are there? There's only one. So if there's one x squared, that's what a equals. Even though you don't write a one in front of the x squared, you just need to know there's one of them. So the a value is one, okay? Next up, let's look at the value for B, right? Well, what replaced the B? That's a negative four. So the minus does go with the four. So negative four is your value for B. And then the C, right? What replaces C? Well, that's a positive two. So C equals two. And we need to know these numbers for our formulas for vertex and then Y intercept, okay? So again, vertex, right? Vertex, the X value is negative B over two A. And then this means take that value and plug it back in, evaluate the function for that value to find the y value, okay? So here we go, we'll, we'll slow it down, right? So the x value, okay? So that's negative b over 2a. So we're gonna replace the b. The b was replaced with a negative four, so we replace this b here with a negative four. So we have negative, negative four there, and then we have 2a, right? Remember the a, that was a one, so this a gets replaced with a one there. So now we just do order of operations. Negative, negative four, opposite of negative four, that's four, and then two times one is two. So you have four divided by two, that makes two. And that's going to be your X value for the vertex. Okay. So X value is two. Now, if you know an X value, how do you find a Y value? Plug it back in, evaluate it, substitute. Okay. So here we go. So we're going to replace the, the X's with the value of two. And, and that's what this function notation is saying, right? We're going to find F of two, right? This is f of negative b over 2a was two. So we're doing f of two. That's what this part here means. Okay. So here we go, right? So we got two squared minus four times two plus two, right? So that's a two squared minus four times two. Uh, so here we go. Two squared, that's a four and then negative four times two. So that's going to be a minus eight. Four times two is eight and then a plus two. Now add these all up, right? Uh, we did exponents first, then we did our multiplication. Now we do addition, subtraction, right? Four plus two makes six minus eight. Six minus eight makes a negative two, or you can add left to right. So vertex is going to be two. Negative two is going, going to be the ordered pair, the coordinate for our vertex. Next up, find the y-intercept. For y-intercept, the, the formula is super easy, right? Zero comma C, right? C, what was C? Well, C was two. So the y-intercept is two right there. It's your constant term there. Um, now, why is that? Well, remember on your y-intercept, that's where x equals zero. That's the y-axis. So you're actually plugging in or evaluating this function, but you're trading all the x's for zeros because that's the, the x value of the y-intercept. So zero squared minus four times zero, zero minus zero plus two, that makes two, okay? So it just ends up being the, the constant term here in general form. If you're in vertex form, it's a little bit different, okay? So, and this is similar to like with slope intercept form, that um, that value there for B, that, that was your constant term for MX plus B, that was also the Y intercept there. Just making that connection between general form for a quadratic and slope intercept form for a line. So now that we have our vertex and y intercept, we are ready to put that on the graph and graph our parabola. So here we go. So the vertex, that was two negative two. So two on the x, negative two on the y right there. And then the y intercept on the y axis, that's at two right there. And then we also have our reflected y intercept. So remember we have our line of symmetry or our axis of symmetry, it goes through the vertex. Now, if you notice here, the y intercept is one, two to the left. So the reflection is gonna be two to the right, okay? So here we go, one, two to the right. And now, now we are ready to graph. Now notice on this one, your leading coefficient, your x squared, that's positive. So that tells you that it is gonna open up, okay? So you can kind of get that ahead of time so you know you're making a U, okay? So here we go, so, so now we can graph. Now there's our graph there. Now, if you're doing this by hand, boom, this is the way I'd recommend doing it. It is pretty fast. There is something 
a little bit shorter that you can do uh, based off of the, the, the leading coefficient on the X squared. Now, if you're doing it on a computer though, a lot of times what they'll do is they'll say, first click on the vertex and then click on any other point. So if you're doing it on the computer, you'd click here for the vertex and then go to the Y intercept and click there. And then it automatically reflects it to the other side. So that's kind of a shortcut if you're doing it on the computer. If you're doing it by hand, you'll have to go like this. So it's one of the faster ways of graphing quadratics. Now we're going to graph f of x equals negative x squared minus 4x plus 8. Now this does follow the general form for a quadratic ax squared plus bx plus c. So the value for a, there's a negative 1x, right? So it's, a, it's there's only 1x squared there and it's negative, so it's a negative one, okay? Um, and then for B, we're looking at what replaces the B value there, that's a negative four. And then for the C, what replaces the C uh, or the constant term, that's gonna be an eight, okay? So now that we've identified our A, our B, and our C, which you don't actually have to write these down, you just you can, you can just look at the function while you go through to calculate your vertex and your y-intercept, okay? So remember vertex, the X value is gonna be negative B over two, 2a is going to be the x value for your vertex. So here we go. So negative b, b was replaced with a negative 4. So that's going to be a negative 4 there. And then the a, that's going to be a negative 1. So instead of 2 times a, it's 2 times negative 1 there. Now we do our order of operations. We have a negative negative 4. Negative of negative is positive. So, so the numerator is a 4. And then the denominator is a negative 2, right? We have 2 times negative 1, negative 2. So we have a positive divided by a negative. So we know it'll be a negative and then we have 4 divided by 2 makes 2. So negative 2 is going to, going to be the x value of the vertex, negative 2. Now to find the y, plug it back in, evaluate the function. And that's what this is saying here. Negative b over 2a was negative 2. So that means f of negative 2 replaced the x with negative 2. So here we go. So we're going to have negative negative 2 squared minus 4 times negative 2 and then plus 8. Okay, so now order of operations, we have negative 2 squared makes a positive 4, but we have the negative of that. So negative 4 is going to be this negative, negative 2 squared, right? The base is negative 2, which means you have two negative 2s being multiplied, positive 2, and then this yellow negative means do the opposite of that or the negative of the four. Okay. And now we have a negative four times a negative two, negative times negative is positive. And then four times two is eight. Okay. And then we still have this plus eight here. Okay. Now we just do uh, add, right? We did uh, exponents multiply. Now we do add, subtract, right? Eight and eight is 16 minus four is going to make 12, right? So the Y value for the vertex is going to be a 12. So for finding the vertex, find the X first, negative B over two A, and then plug it back in, evaluate the function for that value that you got for the X, right? Anytime you have an X and you need to find the Y, you plug it in, you evaluate. Okay. Um, and then the Y intercept, here we go. Y intercept, that's just going to be that C term there. So it's going to be an eight. And remember where that comes from, right? The, the X value of the Y intercept is zero. So you put zero in for X and zero in for X, zero squared minus zero, four times zero, zero plus eight just makes eight. So that, that's how we know that it's just an eight for the, for the Y intercept. And now that we have the vertex and the Y intercept, we're ready to graph. So here we go. We're going to start by plotting the vertex. So negative 2, 12. So negative 2 on the X, 12 on the Y. Vertex is going to be there. And then the Y intercept on the Y axis is going to be at the 8 right there. Now, we also have that reflected Y intercept. So remember, the axis of symmetry goes right down the vertex there. So there's our axis of symmetry. This Y is two, uh, the Y intercept is two to the right of the axis of symmetry. So the reflected is gonna be two to the left. It's on the opposite side of the line of symmetry. Now on this one here, it's gonna open down. So our leading coefficient, our X squared, our A is a negative. So it's gonna open down. So it's gonna look like an upside down U. So you can kind of know that ahead of time. So that way when you go to graph and you see something like this, Oh, okay. Well, it's an upside down U. So here's my graph. Boom. Upside down U. Okay. And again, if you're on the computer, a lot of times it will, you, you click on the vertex first and then click on another point in this case, the Y intercept, and it does, it automatically reflects it to the other side. So a little bit easier on computers, but on doing it by hand, it's not that much more time anyhow. 
So just a quick review, that way everything's kind of in your brain all at once going quickly here, right? Here's our general form, f of x equals ax squared plus bx plus c. For graphing, first we'll find the vertex. So the x value, right, coordinate point, right, x, y pair there, ordered pair. The x value is negative b over 2a, so the opposite or the negative of whatever is in front of the x, and then over two times whatever number is in front of the x squared, right, the coefficient of the x squared, the coefficient of the x term, right? And then this part here basically just means whatever value you got, so this f of means whatever number's in here, that's what you plug in for x, okay? So you're plugging in whatever value you got for negative b over 2a, right? And so that's what you're doing. You're, you're plugging in this value for x there, x there, and that gives you the y value. And that works for any x whatsoever. If you know the x, you plug it back in to find the corresponding y, okay? And then after we found the, the vertex, next up, find the y-intercept. It's the, the constant term for general form or the, the value for c there. And then we, we're going to do the reflected y-intercept, and that's going to give us our u or or our, our upside down u, right? And it, then if the, the x squared is positive, it makes a u. And then if the x squared is negative, it'll make an upside down u or an n. Sometimes people will say that. Anyhow, if you enjoyed the video, please feel free to leave a like. If you didn't like the video, please hit the dislike button twice just to make sure.